Hey folks, and welcome to another IC82 review. Uh, I have someone very, very special to thank, and somebody very, very special to mention in this video. And they're both called Jacob. <laughs> this is the brand new Class 150 by Batman that's been sent up from my really good friend Jacob all the way down in Cornwall. It's in his favourite livery, which is First Great Western, as you can see. It's 21 pin DCC ready. It's um, uh, class 150 obviously, it's a two car DMU. The, you, you could also get them in three car sets. They did do a few three car sets, but they were at least two car sets. And I think he's had it for a while, maybe a year or something, probably not even a year. And, but what's really interesting is that I have already done the class 150. I know I've already done the 150. And here it is. But this was five years ago. And if you'll remember the review of that particular model, there was something that really, really, really annoyed me and stopped the Class 150 from missing. It, it basically forced it to miss out on maximum points. And that is the motor unit here. The problem with the motor unit is that it takes up the entire unit. Look at that. Absolutely chock-a-full of motor. Literally, I mean, when you do take the body off, there's a massive motor in the center there with twin flywheels, twin uh, drive shafts, and then it powers both breeze. So there's plenty of power. In fact, one could say there's too much power. This one class, this class 150 is strong enough to haul a train of about 20 coaches. It's just ridiculous. It's like using a Boeing 747 to go shopping in. Um, so it missed out on full marks because of that. Now, it did divide the community as well. A lot of people thought, hey, it doesn't really matter. But no, it does. <laughs> Trust me, Batman fans are really, really quick to criticise Hornby whenever there is the tiniest thing wrong. Yet, they seemed to overlook this and didn't really mind. Hypocrites much? The other unit is much better. You can see right through that. And you can see all the seats. You could fit lighting. You could sit people down. I mean, come on folks, this is what we do these days. We do put people on the seats. We do fit lighting strips. And you couldn't do that to an entire half of the original Class 150. So, what happened? Well, Batman fixed it. I'll show you in a second. Um, a little bit of background history on the Class 150s. They were made by Brel in York. They were made between 1984 and 1987. They made 137 of them, which is quite a lot. And they were basically like the first mass manufactured DMU to replace the, what are now called heritage DMUs. All the old ones, like the 101s, the 105s, the 104s and 108s and stuff like that. Uh, steel body construction. Uh, I think the engine was about 280 something horsepower which is less than a Ford Focus RS, which is <laughs> interesting. And they had a top speed of about 75 miles an hour. Although I'm sure that on the downhill, with a bit of a good breeze behind, the driver's probably got to 76. So, let's open up the box and see what we get inside. Okay, well I really do like this packaging. Um, at least that's remained consistent. It's very nice, it's presentable, it looks after the units really well, and it's even quite recyclable, should you want to recycle it. Not that I think many people would want to do that, but you could. So this is quite lightweight, and this is really heavy. So that's obviously the motor one. Um, we'll have a look at the motor one first. Let's just cut right to it. I don't want to waste your time. I know you've got busy, busy lives. So here is the motor unit. And just look at this. So here's the block of ice. Let's just slide that off. Lift this up. Oh, I think he's lost them. Um... Oh, yes, I don't know if Jacob's aware of that, but this needs to be affixed back onto the end of this unit here. I shall do that in a moment. It's not a problem. Maybe it just happened whilst it was in transit. It has travelled a long way. So, here is the new retooled Class 150. Now, look, look at this. Look how you can see through at least two thirds of the unit. They've put the motor in this end, and you really can tell, because look, if I try and balance it, it well, I'm not going to drop it, Jacob, obviously, don't worry. But if I try to balance it, it just wants to fall to this end. And it is really heavy. So the motor has been compacted, has been condensed into just this one end here, and that's 
acceptable. <laughs> That's not too bad, considering that there is very little room for um, motors in this unit. Uh, I, I still think that the Hornby Class 153 does it perfectly, and if you don't believe me, go grab one, they're just beautiful. But this is much, much better. If we compare this to what it was, just look at that. This is the way it should have been. And I'm so, so thankful to Batman for actually doing it. It's so good that they've responded, they've fixed it, they've solved the problem. And as a result, many more of these should sell at a higher price. So that's really, really cool. The rest of the model is as you'd expect. I mean, the detail is just stunning on these. Look at all the underframe detail. Just look at that. Gosh, I can almost smell the oil. The livery application is beautiful. I'm not um, very familiar with the first Great Western livery because we don't get much of that around Cheshire, but I'm pretty sure Jacob can confirm for me that it's pretty much spot on. The lights do light up, they work. The light clusters are beautiful. They're not too bright, they're not too dim. You've got a little antenna on the top. There's even a um, destination board there, which I think says Gloucester. It's hard to tell, this room is so sunny. It's seriously beautiful. The, as I say, the, uh, the original Class 150 was stunning and it missed out just because of that one unit. If I open this unit as well, you'll see that this is no different. This is just as high quality. This is the coupling that you use to connect the two halves together. It's really important, don't lose it. It does conduct electrical call um, signals from unit to unit. I'm pretty sure it only needs one chip. I'm pretty sure, but uh, don't quote me on that. I'll have, to, I'll have to check. So here's the other unit, much, much lighter. And obviously you've got um, light shining through the entire unit rather than just two thirds of it like that because there's no motor but there are pickups there's still pickups on this unit it needs to power the lights um, it's 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 just stunning <laughs> it's just beautiful folks honestly the detail it's just incredible I, 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 I'm gonna have to get one I probably in um, oh, what livery oh well if I've already got a Reva then I'll probably get regional railways yeah, I'll probably get one in regional railways because I used to see these all the time in my hometown of Alsasia, traveling over the level crossings. And I loved the fact that it said on the side, sprinter or super sprinter and stuff like that. I thought, wow, they're so fast. Yeah, because 75 miles an hour is dead fast. False advertising there. But they are, they're beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful. They're one of the, the if not the nicest, one of the nicest DMUs you can buy. Just stunning. I mean, Hornby has the 153, which really is beautiful. And Batman have the 150, which I'm glad to report is now perfect. Let's put it on the track and see how it runs. Okay, so here we are over at the test layout in the conservatory. I'm just gonna whack the entire unit onto the outer loop here and send it in that direction. It is a little tricky, it is a little fiddly to get the two units coupled together. The connectors feel really delicate. My advice is to just flip the whole thing upside down, rest it on like a towel or a cushion or a loco cradle, and then just support the couplings at each end as you push them together using that connecting pin. That's how I did it, and I've had to do that several times now. <laughs> and um, it works really well. So. There we go, it's on the track. Now, I'm not expecting it to be any different to the other one. I expect it to be just as smooth, just as nice. Let's give it some juice and see what happens. Oh gosh, do you know, if it's possible, it's actually even better. It's even smoother. And just look at that. I haven't chipped this, folks. That's not DCC. That is DC. Absolutely phenomenal. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Right. Okay, let's get it running around the layout then. It's 
smooth as a baby's bum, folks. The mechanism in this 150, it's just quality. It's just as good as the original 150 from 2009-2010, if not a tiny little bit better. Beautiful running, even at low speeds. Just fantastic. As, as for the other Jacob I mentioned at the start of the video, what do you make of this DNA then? because um, he got in touch not so long ago to let me know that um, he loves the videos, loves the channel and so I'm asking you Jacob, what do you make of this Class 150? It's pretty good isn't it? <laughs> Stunning folks, seriously, just beautiful. And I've just thought of the coolest thing that I can say um, in conclusion as well.